What is going on guys, DBG here, in this video we are going to be doing our monthly update for the most overpowered cards in NBA 2K19, my team. So basically what we're going to be doing, as always, we're going to be doing two players every single month. We are going to be doing, well sorry, two players every single position every month. We're going to be doing the most overpowered player as a starting five, and then an honorable mention as a bench player, and then the last three spots in the squad are going to be three budget cards that I think you guys really need to try out. And no, we're not going to be talking about the likes of um, Thurl Bailey and Mo Bamba, who everyone knows about. Three cards you may not have tried, and I don't think I've talked about too much. And if you guys don't know, we've done this every single month since... I think it was October was the first month we've done it. I said I was going to do it at the start of the year, and actually, it's something that I felt has done really well. It's a, Well, there are videos that have done really well, it's something that's gone down really well, and it means that you can kind of have a look back to see what cards were released in what month, and also if there was any months that were just really not good for players being released in the game. April was a, a meh month, to be completely honest. So I'm going to put on the screen the um, most overpowered cards from the month of March. So obviously, uh, starting 1 through 5 are the most OP, and the bench is the um, second most OP. And obviously, the last three are budget cards. But to be completely honest, my opinion does change month for month. So there are certain cards that maybe say are the mo second most OP card one month, and suddenly they're most OP the next month. And there's a few cards that I just didn't like when they first came out and they've kind of grown on me. Just like, I think Danny Granger wasn't in the most OP small forwards for like a month or two. But yeah, was in the most OP small forwards up until March because I figured out how good base 11 was. But yeah, so that is basically the premise of the video. Now let's get on to the players. So first off, we are going to talk about the point guard position. And in my opinion, the most OP point guard you can buy, I should probably say that... At the same time, um, while I'm not going to be doing cards like um, the Collection Awards, cards like Karolinko, because they take a thousand cards to get, I will be including cards like, say, CP3 and um, Oscar Robertson, because they are only set rewards, and it's max 12 cards needed to get all these cards. But um, the most overpowered uh, point guard in the game, in my opinion, is Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson, 6'9 point guard. He's got 8 Hall of Fame badges, Dimer, Lab City Passer, Difficult Shots, Acrobat, Tyler Score, some good gold badges as well. I don't actually have Limbless on him, which is a little bit strange for me anyway, because I think I put Limbless on every player. But Magic, with a shoe and a coach, goes up to a 99 three-point shot. He's got a great mid-range shot, great post hook, great post fadeaway. He's 6'9", so he's big. Unbelievable passer. 80 block, great steal rating, unbelievable defender, and again, it's just an incredible card in game. Super, super fast as well, and is just one of the best cards in the game, period. One of the few cards that are point guard position that's actually usable to run the point guard. And then I had Dilemma for number two. Do I go with Oscar Robertson, who is just kind of a better overall card, can run the point guard better, passes a little better, 11 Hall of Fame badges, can defend a little better, or do I go for the guy who can literally just light people up? And I went for the guy who can light people up. So Gilbert Arenas, I honestly think that his signature limited is only slightly better than the signature series due to Hall of Fame, Deep Range Deadeye, but all the other really good badges this one has, like Difficult Shots, Catch and Shoot, and Limitless Range. Um, Gilbert Arenas, 6-3 point guard, so he's going to leave a little, to be, little bit to be desired on defense, but he is the best offensive point guard in the game, the best shooter in the game, in my opinion. He's really, he is the, basically, it's the best release, in my opinion. The easiest release to get off, and also green, shoots better than anyone else for me. He's a great dunker, he's got good ball control, super fast, decent on defense, and the only problem is that he's 6'3". If he wasn't 6'3", he would have, if he was even 6'5", he'd be ahead of Magic Johnson. So now we are on to the two guard position, and at number one, a lot of people are gonna want Vince Carter on this. As I always say, I don't like Vince Carter. So I'm gonna put him in as like a, a side note that Vince Carter may be the most OP if you like to use him. But, and again, I was going to put in Brandon Roy, who had number one last month, but to be completely honest, T Max is incredible. I think T Max better. T Max got limitless range, deep range, that I great release, good goal badges. He's also got an unbelievable mid range, good three ball. His limitless range feels like it's from further than anyone else in the game. He's got a great driving dunk. He's got 90 ball control, great block rating, decent on defense, super fast, six foot eight as well, and he's just incredible. As the second most OP two guard, is one of the best value cards in the game, and it's Clyde Drexler. At some stages, Clyde Drexler was like 75k of T as far as I know. But Clyde Drexler, 10 Hall of Fame badges. He's got difficult shots, some great dunk, he badges and catch and shoot. Got a really nice release, one of the cheesy park releases. He's got 96 open shot mid. 
Three ball's not great, but it is pretty decent. 90 free throw, 98 driving dunk. He can speed boost as well. Good block, great shot contest, great steal. He's got great speed, speed ball, acceleration, insane auto quickness, great on defense, and again, is just an incredible, incredible card in this game. Now we're at the small forward position, and our second new card, obviously Clyde Drax, there was one of the new ones. We are going to go with Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, in my opinion, is the best small forward in my team. 11 Hall of Fame badges, include limitless range. 6'9", long. He's got a great shot mid, great shot three. He's got a great driving dunk. He can speed boost. He can steal the ball quite well. Good shot block and shot contest. Great defender, good rebounder. Can play one through four. Insane lot of quickness, great defender. And I know a lot of people are going to want this guy right here as well. And Giannis Antetokounmpo to be on the list. Or even some people want Melo. And some people don't miss with Larry Bird. For some reason, I'm not good with any of these three cards. To be, like being 100% honest, I'm not good with Larry Bird, Melo, or Giannis. Um, Scotty would have been close to making this list. Paul George would have been close to making it. Obviously, Danny Granger, um, a card that I really, really like, but like slightly ahead of Granger, I'm going to go with LeBron James. LeBron, 99 offense, defensive overall. 10 Hall of Fame badges, is one of the best guys to run a point guard, to be honest, in my team. Great shot mate, great shot three. He releases money. He's got 86 ball control, speed boost, great passer, great block steal and shot contest, great animations, unbelievable speed, speed ball and acceleration. He's got great lateral quickness and is a lockdown defender. An absolutely incredible card in my team. Now we're on to the power forward position and we've got another card that has only come into the game this month. And the reason why I said we're gonna use reward cards only if they're collection rewards is because I really want to get this guy in the video. Galaxy Opal Blake Griffin. Yep, in my opinion, Galaxy Opal Blake Griffin is by far the most OP power forward in the game. He has got 18 Hall of Fame badges. He's got difficult shots, which is a good one. Catch and shoot is good. Posterizer. All the post badges are good. I put um, Dimer, Pick and Roll Maestro, and Deep Range Jedi, and Limitless Range on him. And he's just so... You can play one through five. You can guard one through five. One of the best guys in the game. After James Worthy and Giannis, probably the second or third best player in the game. Giannis is obviously the best, but he's very close to Worthy. Great post game, great shot made, good shot three. He's also got a great driving dunk. 86 ball control, great blocks, shot contest, decent steal. He's got great rebounding stats, insane speed, speed ball and acceleration for a power forward. Decent lateral quickness, but good for a 6'10 player. And he's got 97 on ball defensive IQ, which is great. Second most OP power forward. Power forward position is a little bit weak, a little bit, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Um, Oh, Josh Smith is good, Leitner is good, but none of them come even close to Anthony Davis. AD, really solid card. There's a reason why at times in console he's 800k NT. Good three ball, good mid-range shot, great post game. He can dunk really well. He's also got a great block steal on shot contest. Great rebounder. He's really fast. Not the fast with the ball, but he's really fast in general. Decent hour quickness and a great, great defender. So definitely deserves a spot as the second most OP power forward for the month of April. And then at the center position... We have still got the exact same center as was number one in March, Arvidas Sabonis. Sabonis is just incredible in game, averaging 14.3 points per game for me. He's the best player on my bench lineup, which includes LeBron James, Larry Bird, Melo, KD, cards like that. He's still one of my best players. Got one Hall of Fame badge and it's Dimer. Great post game, great shot mid, great shot three. His release is money as well. Decent dunker, he's an unbelievable passer. Great block and shot contest, great rebounder. Speed of 70 and acceleration 70 is not terrible, especially because he's 7 foot 3. 37 lateral quickness leaves a little bit to be desired. I'm not going to lie, it does. But it's literally it's, uh, this guy's only downside. If he's got one, one major negative, however, the rest of his game just kind of outweighs that one little flaw. But actually, no, to be fair, it is a bit of a major flaw. flaw. But he's so good at everything else that it outweighs it. But inevitably, probably this month, we will get a card better than him. And number two is Greg Oden. Greg Oden's really close. Greg Oden is really, really close. He's got 10 Hall of Fame badges, some really, really nice ones. He can play really well in the post, super strong, can actually shoot the mid-range really well, can shoot the three if he's wide open. Good release. He's got a driving look of 90. He's got insane block rating, decent steal, good shot contest, great rebounder, really fast, 88 speed, 85 acceleration. 80 lateral quickness is great compared for center, and compared to Arvita Sabonis, it's crazy, and a lockdown defender. So, without doubt, they're different types of players. Greg Owens a much more defensive center, and I actually, when I do run two centers, I don't actually mind running these two guys as my two main centers. Although, I was honestly contemplating putting this guy in, but I know you guys would have killed me. 
this was 100% my own opinion, Mo Bamba would be in at number two instead of Greg Oden. But I know you guys will kill me and he's not that much better in my opinion than Oden, so I put Oden on the list. So now we're going to go on to the three kind of budget players you guys need to try out. First of all, is a card that I haven't talked about too much, although I did talk about it in my best value point cards, and he is number one on that list, and for a reason. It is not Rod Strickland, even though Rod Strickland is one of those really underrated cards that not a lot of people used. Um, it is Reggie Theus. Reggie Theus, 6'7 point guard. He can play inside, he can shoot the mid, he can shoot the three quite well. Okay, dunker. He's got great ball control, great passer. He's rel is very fast for a 6'7 point guard, 90 hour quickness. And again, he is 6'7, so he can compete with a lot of guys running small forwards and two guards at point guard. Then we have got a two guard. I call him Clay, Th better Clay. That's literally what this card is. It is Dick Van Ardell. He is literally better Clay. 89 offense, 96 defense overall. Even though he is two inches smaller, he's got better gold badges. He's got a good three ball, good home shot mid. He's also got a really good steal and shot contest. Decent speed speed ball and acceleration, 96 power quickness, unbelievable defender. He's essentially Clay Thompson's Ruby, just a little bit better. Obviously, if you've got a major budget, he's not gonna be that useful, but if you don't, he might be a very, very fun card to use. And last up is a Sapphire card. And it's a card that overall is just really, really solid. It is Sapphire Christian Wood. Sapphire Christian Wood, 87 offense, 82 defense overall, three all badges, a 6'10 power forward, and he's just solid at everything. Like, really solid. Decent post game, good shot mid, decent shot three, decent dunker, can't speed boost unfortunately, but he's got good block steal and shot contest, a decent speed, speed ball acceleration for a power forward, good rebounder, decent lateral quickness. He's just overall just an all around well rounded card. He's cheap and kind of just really underrated card in the game. So anyway, yep, that is the video. These are the top five or top five or 10 most overpowered cards in my team, whatever way you want to look at it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.